Hello and welcome back. We are going to be doing a starting steps video here as Brazil. Uh, for our video, we are going to be mainly concerned with getting the I didn't vote for Pedro achievement, but at the game start, if you go into the objectives tabs, you can get the economics dominance achievement or related achievement as well. So we're going to click start game and be off on our way. Now, Brazil is in a bit of an interesting spot. Uh, they are the strongest nation in South America and they're relatively... Um, which is a relatively low interest uh, sort of region or area because uh, great powers will generally not stick a bunch of interests in here so you can kind of do what you want to some extent uh, but we are going to start off with improving relations with the two great powers who are not like that and then we're going to talk a little bit more about Brazil so we'll improve relations with both France and Great Britain just so we don't get their fingers in our pie. Now Brazil uh, starts out in a state of war with two nations both Paranti and uh, Graua Para. Uh, apologies if the pronunciation is wrong uh, and so we do have a little bit of a journal entry to finish this war it's a little bit of local flavor overall there doesn't seem to be a tremendous amount of uh local flavor for brazil uh but it is something so what we have going on in brazil is we have a ton of uh we are decent on resources, but we do what we do have a ton of is logging camps. We don't have any logging camps, which is pure logging camp throughput, which would be, have been really nice. Uh, but we also have a lot of places with you know negative uh, infrastructure and state construction efficiency. As we get deeper into the Amazon rainforest, this will be consistent. Uh, but we will get uh, hardwood output in these areas. You don't really want to build too much. You'll notice, uh, for example, in here in Mato Grosso. Uh, you are getting minus 33% infrastructure from the Amazon rainforest and minus 10% infrastructure. So that's a pretty hefty malice. And so you'll want to mainly build along the coast uh, in terms of what we else we start with in terms of like what makes Brazil unique uh, is we start out with a decent amount of population, but we don't have a lot of our arable land fully filled out. Just like all the Americas, we don't have a lot of our arable land filled out, which means we will also have access to very high migration from our unused arable land. And so this will mean we will be able to siphon off European pops very, very quickly if we get inside a customs union or if we manage to get Europeans inside of our customs union because we will accept their pops more easily or we need to shift to multiculturalism quickly. And so this will kind of be another feature that's a little bit unique to Brazil and just something worth thinking about. Let's go and declare a couple interests. We're gonna declare interests uh, in uh, the, what is this? I forget, the La Plata region. And we want to declare another interest over here in Indonesia. Now because we want to expand there relatively early. Now we will mobilize both of our generals here and stick them on the fronts as another part of kind of what we are doing, at least diplomatically. And then we will also mobilize all the conscripts. I'm pretty sure you can win this war without mobilizing the conscripts if you get like lucky generals or if you really micromanage it and you do like rear landings like this type of stuff but it's very easy to just mobilize. It's not gonna decrease the cost of or increase the cost of labor too, too much. Okay. Now, we are also going to move the capital here at the start. Um, generally speaking, you want to move your capital to a place that has the highest arable land count uh, this way and also is not running a penalty on infrastructure or construction. This way you can build tall in the capital and focus on manufacturing. So we will be moving the capital to Sao Paulo, uh, which has the most arable land, uh, or sorry, to... Uh, from Rio de Janeiro to Sao Paulo. Now we are also gonna encourage manufacturing in Sao Paulo. This is not ideal at the start or it is not best at the start, but it will become best as we build tall there. So we'll come into the edicts and we'll actually, we can't move the capital yet because we're at war, but we will come into the decrees and we will put down our encourage uh, manufacturing edict here. And we will also put down road maintenance here so we can build more and we'll look to build tall here. Now we are also going to put down and encourage resource industries uh, in Minas uh, Gires, uh, which is where we're going to want to build the resource industries out and we'll also put road maintenance. Now they are having trouble currently with the infrastructure, so this will help with the infrastructure. There's also a few mines there already and the encouraged resource industries will increase the throughput of the mines, including the gold throughput, which will help our income um, early on and eventually this will be kind of one of our better mining spots uh, with the iron mines and the lead mines, although in the short term we will probably be building up the iron mines up here in Mar uh, Maranhal. That's not Asian, I pronounced it like it was an Asian. Um, okay, Maranhal. 
As far as tech goes, we know that Lathe will natural spread to us no matter what. This is the highest priority tech. However, because we know it will not spread to us, we are instead going to actively research stock exchange, and then we will come back to doing Lathe. And the reason why Lathe is so good is, of course, uh, it unlocks all these PMs that allow you to empower the capitalists, which empowers the industrialists, and you get a larger investment pool transfer, and so it's going to be very good. Okay. We have guys on the borders. We have a little bit of extra authority to spend. Uh, we are do start out taxing uh, liquor. We are going to add taxes on services and just have these two taxes in at the start. And then we are going to put in on our construction centers. Now we want to, we know we want to build in Sao Paulo. So we're going to put down two construction centers here. And we know we want to build up here. So we will put down another one here. And that should get things going actually let's put down two here uh because we know we're going to want to build iron as far as buildings go we actually start out with a decent amount of buildings we start out with a decent amount of pops and also the knowledge that we're going to get a ton from migration um and so we will look to we already have tools we already have a ton of logging clam uh camps which is really 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 nice um these are one of the best buildings early game especially for empowering the uh industrialists because they are owned by capitalists or they're very easily made owned by capitalists by switching on to sawmills early on and this is kind of the early game thing but we notice we also have you know a ton of coffee plantations a decent amount of cotton sugar all this type of stuff which is going to make it and also maize which is not the best uh which is going to make it overall uh you know, it's going to be a little bit hard to get out from under the agrarianism, but we're going to try it. For trade routes, we're actually going to get rid of a couple of these trade routes. Uh, we are going to get rid of uh, our sugar export because we don't want to be exporting any arable goods. And we will get rid of our liquor import. And then we will also get rid of our luxury goods imports uh, and our wood export. Probably... Because we are going to be building up a lot of construction, so we're going to be using this wood. And this is going to refund us a huge amount of bureaucracy, which we are going to want to make uh, use of with better trade routes. We will keep on importing the arms. This will be fine. So now what we will do is we will try and import uh, fabric. And we'll see if we, any of these are productive. It doesn't look like they're that productive. We are going to import them. Uh, why don't we put in a route to the Americas? And then what we will also do is we will also come into goods. And we will switch this to uh, focus on prioritizing the imports. Uh, this way, our places do not build the cotton themselves. And we will use the fabric and the wood for the construction centers, at least until we transition iron frame buildings. Uh, for the this, uh, for the grain, we will put encourage exports, not because it's good, but because, of course, uh, we want to do the corn laws event. And so this will be getting in on that. And then also for laws, we will want to get colonialization as quickly as possible. And so what we'll do is we'll reform the government. We'll put in military and the landowners. It is probably best, by the way, to keep re-rolling until you get a jingoist uh, landowner as your starting guy. Because that will make it much easier to go colonial affairs. But we're not going to worry about that too much. And we're going to go colonial exploitation here. And I think we can have an end pause and a go. Uh, and then look to win both of these wars, uh, and also look to add more stuff into the construction queue. Now, we are encouraging resource industries here, but we do not want to expand here because currently having a little bit of an infrastructure problem. What we instead will want to expand the resources is we're going to want to expand here. So we're going to put this one on auto expand, and we're going to build an iron mine here and put this on auto expand, and we're going to look to build tall here in Maranhao. Uh, initially, uh, as far as that goes, but eventually we will need more uh, tooling workshops here in Sao Paulo, which is where we're going to be moving the capital. Now, we're still making a lot of money. Uh, we will want to try and make it so we're not making very much money, and so we'll see exactly how that shakes out in terms of the construction centers. I'm going to take a little pause. Boost our resource industries further. Very nice to get that event right at the start. Um, now, these wars uh, could be... It's a lot of RNG regarding how, you know, you roll on the battle and, like, this type of stuff if you don't do the conscripts. But you should be able to do it with conscripts pretty comfortably. We want to... We will not pick the bad event for this. And our guy will come on over and we will finish going through here. Now, we are about to hit a weird inflection point. By the way, it's big nice that we have these adjacencies to France and Great Britain, because this means we can trade with them easier. Now, we are at an interesting point where we could try and become a protectorate of one of these guys. And uh, this is an interesting inflection point because... 
Here, let us ostracize them because we really need a lot of our bureaucracy because we're about to do this. In moving the capital to Sao Paulo, we lose a lot of uh, bureaucracy. We also want the bureaucracy for trade routes, I think. Um, but we are considering a little bit of a uh, change capital of Sao Paulo. So here's the thing. Here's the consideration. We can siphon off a ton of French pops. Uh, if we go, what is it? If we go, I believe it is, uh, if we go cultural exclusion, I believe, uh, then, because we share a cultural trait uh, with the French, we will be able to siphon off their pops. Uh, and so getting into cultural exclusion, um, I think racial segregation will also be able to siphon off their pops. Um, heritage cultural trait. One moment, I'm gonna double check these. Okay, so on racial segregation, which we have now, we will accept all European pops. And so what we can do is we can ask to become a protectorate or try and join their customs union uh, by doing a large volume of trade with them. The problem is, at least right now, uh, we want to puppet Argentina and Chile. If you get a, someone as their subject, as your subject, you can no longer uh, join a customs union. And I think we want to join a customs union as a means of expansion. And so this leaves us with a little bit of a quandary. We're going to sort by population and see which European has the most pop. Uh, we see that France, Austria, and Russia are all pretty good as a, uh, as far as Europeans and pops go. Uh, we don't have an interest, uh, same interest uh, with Russia. So what we'll do for our first war is we will kind of make it so that we are not uh, acquiring a subject, even though this would be best. We're gonna just conquer state Borneo, uh, North Borneo in uh, Brunei, which is a relatively good war. Uh, we will of course recruit a general here. Uh, that way, uh, woodland experts probably gonna be pretty good for us because we will be fighting in a place with a lot of woodlands. Um, but this way there's less of a landing penalty with this 10 stack and we also don't have to pay for as much mobilization. Um, but go, going back to the point is I think we want to try and get inside France's market or Great Britain's market if we can. And the idea is so we can start siphoning off pops right away because we have a lot of migration attraction uh, from our, uh, you know, we have a very, very solid amount of migration attraction from the fact that we have a lot of unused arable land here. Even with the standard living of 8.3, we still have migration attraction of 33. And so as long as we can get uh, be inside a European's market, this will be extremely strong. Um, and so this is going to be our strategy kind of in the early game. Uh, and this is probably the strategy for every South American country and maybe even the United States. Uh, we will also get mass migration events much easier. Um, and we will just look to expand mainly in South America once we get in the customs union. But for now, we can't acquire any subjects. And so we won't do any of that. Or we do not want to acquire any subjects. Um, we do want to try and intentionally do a large trade volume with France, though, if France is going to be our target. And so what we will try and do is we'll try and import fabric. Uh, and we'll see if we can import it from France profitably. Doesn't look like it. A little bit unfortunate. Um, we'll take a look at the other stuff we can import. We can actually, we should be able to switch this stuff over to a little bit better. Uh, we're going to need to switch one of our wood uh, guys over. We'll switch it over to Minas Kiers. We'll switch it over to hardwood production. We'll switch these over to fishing trawlers. Also, being inside a customs union will allow us to kind of specialize a little bit more. But we swap these over. So now we have a demand for silk, and we can import that from France. We also have a demand for cannons, which we can import from the British. Getting inside the British Customs Union would be nice. Since we have an adjacency here, we do uh, kind of have this going on. Uh, but of course, what's not nice is uh, trade routes. Now, all of our trade routes with... Uh, oop. America are inactive, so we will just delete them because we are worried about bureaucracy issues. And we will see what else do we have shortage of this we'll try and import it from either the british or the french and then we also need silk which we can import from either the british or the shing uh, we will probably do just the british for now uh, because we are interested in getting inside their customs union uh, which will be quite nice for siphoning off pops uh, because we have five million pops but that will crank up if we get our you know migration on 
New Granada declared rivalry. We could probably rival all these guys. We will be subjugating them once we are inside of a customs union. Let's just double check and see what else we need uh, or what else we might be running a shortage. I don't think we're a uh, shortage of clippers. So let's import these and we will import these, I suppose, from the British. It seems like none of our roots are appearing for French. I think French would be a little bit better, uh, but Great Britain has pretty strong customs union. Long-term Br uh, Great Britain's customs union might be a little bit better and they tend to have an interest uh, in more areas, and so getting them to be happy with you is going to be a little bit better. Uh, we'll take the enactment time here. We do want to... Yes, so this is why you go. The Corn Laws, the modern conservative event. Um, coming over here, we take a look. Landowners, he's moderate right now. Moderate doesn't support anything. A new leader for the age. Now he's a market liberal. Now he supports a bunch of stuff. And now we're in a little bit of a quandary because we could keep going for colonial exploitation or we could go for, you know, the stuff to reform the economy. Since we have a 20% speed bonus on colonial exploitation, I think we're going to go this for now. Uh, but we just have to keep in mind... Uh, that this is not the best law, but we do have 20% speed and we do want to get on colonial exploitation. We should be getting a landing in here soon. And we are making money, so we want to add construction centers. Or, or, we want to start swapping construction over centers over to being iron mines. I think that we will swap over, I think we need to find a place with exactly one construction center. So we're gonna look for a place that has iron because we will probably be expanding for iron a little bit. Uh, and so we're just looking here, we're going to add this to the front of the construction center and we're going to make an iron frame. And so we're just going to, because we're making a lot of money, we want to be losing a little bit of money, would be ideal, um, at least until we get just slightly negative, maybe in the bottom third, uh, or bottom third of running a deficit, something like this. But we'll push in and we'll get Borneo pretty quick here as we try and get uh, Great Britain or France to be willing to let us get inside their customs union uh, rather than just being a protectorate. We don't want to be a protectorate. Um, it would not be the worst uh, and it would probably be a lot faster, but um, all right, we got a negative tick here. So we're gonna actually come off of colonial exploitation, which is not ideal, but we will be able to very quickly go into laissez-faire, which will be very nice. And this is what the market liberal gives you. He allows you to pass, for in the state case of Brazil, will allow you to pass laissez-faire and also uh, free trade quite easily, which is also why we're researching stock exchange first, uh, because once our market liberal dies, it will be otherwise hard for us to get free trade. Um, but if you want to become a protector, free trade is not as important, and you don't need to focus this or rush this. All right, it looks like we're making progress over there. And we the, this should be coming down because we are losing uh, our malice that we have from moving our capital state uh, to here. I believe they should have decent migration attraction. We're still losing some pops, but now it's coming up a little bit. We conquered North Borneo, and so now we want to find another war. Uh, we are going to declare an interest, I think. We're going to declare an interest here. We're going to declare an interest there. We're going to declare an interest there. Now, what the war we really want to declare is we want to puppet Argentina and Chile relatively early on before they attract a bunch of migrants. Uh, but we don't want to do it right now because once we puppet them, we will not be allowed to join a customs union because we will be considered inside of a customs union. And so I think that uh, we need an interest up here to have a relationship with uh, both France and Great Britain, although we have one with France. Or sorry, with Great, Great, Great Britain. This way we can try and get in the customs union. They're just cooperative. These guys are protective, so it'll be easier to get in their customs union. And we do want to declare another war here. So uh, we are going to go for Bahrain, which is always a good one. And we are just going to conquer state them. This will give us a native interest in this region. Um, and we'll be pretty good. Uh, we could also go for a landing on Zulu. This would also be good. And we perhaps would have been a little bit better because Transvaal and Orangey are very, very strong. Uh, but we will just try and do this for now. We get laissez-faire on the first tick. Always nice. Uh, and so we will, we can't go 
free trade just yet. We're a little bit close to being able to go free trade. What we'll do is we'll go for colonial resettlement. Uh, we would prefer exploitation, but we'll go for resettlement. We'll take one tick and then we'll switch to going for uh, free trade. Uh, and so this will be a nice little compromise. We're starting to run a little bit of a surplus here and we're making quite a bit of money. So what we're gonna do is we are going to turn another one of these. We're gonna come into the capital here. And we're going to switch these construction centers over to iron frame which should cause a little bit of a shortage but that shortage will get resolved relatively quickly as this iron uh thing finishes of course big not nice we forgot to turn off the corn laws so let's turn those off now we've actually taken two negative events and now we have end of the corn laws grain trade begins and we also want to import grain very actively that way our auto queue does not construct any grain so uh we want to import from shing uh notably we have an adjacency to shing uh shing's market so we will get free overland trade not using convoys because landfang is part of that market so we will import from shing and then we will also import from the british and then if we can find french on here we will import from france as well and that will cause quite a lot of negative bureaucracy, and so we'll look to sort that out. We'll just delete this, and we'll come, we'll maybe invade Bahrain. And then we should be able to declare another interest, because we don't need this interest there anymore. And we'll put it in South America, and we will be in relatively good shape here. Now, we do want to solve this bureaucracy problem. So we will kick this to the top of the queue, or at least behind. Ugh. We'll kick all these uh, down to the bottom. We're not as interested in finishing those. Uh, everything that's landowner owned, uh, we will prefer to import. And everything that is industrial or capitalist owned, we will prefer to uh, not import, construct ourselves. Stock exchange is coming on soon. So that's good. We're decreasing the price of iron. I do think we have this on auto expand. We will look to this one. We will look to get this up to level 21 for the max economies of scale through bonus. They also notably have a bonus here on the iron just straight up. Uh, at some point, we might want to move our uh, encouraged resource industries from here to here, just at least temporarily, although it will be a little bit better in Minas Garris long term. Let's come up and see what will be done. The Emperor's will obviously will be done. Hmm. So we don't have... I think we can take another tick. We'll do the Emperor's Will will be done, and we'll get a lot more uh, on Colonial Resettlement. We enforce on Bahrain. So let's check and see kind of where we're at in regards to joining the market, because we are looking to siphon off those juicy, juicy, juicy pops. Um, or we could try and conquer European stuff, but this generally occurs a lot of infamy, and so I don't think this is the strategy we want. And so just having a little bit of a think here where we might want to expand. I think it's in Zulu. Uh, normally 10 navy is not enough. But what we're going to do is we're going to split the navy into two. And then we will be able to land as long as we have two guys. And so we will get a nice little double landing. We'll recruit this guy because he's innovative. Uh, I suppose it doesn't really matter too much the traits. But if they ever become leader of the IG or leader of the government, we'd rather have an innovative guy. Assuming, and he's Jingoist, which actually would be relatively nice, so let's recruit him. Try and pay a little bit more attention to ruler traits, although I think overall they're not too tremendously important. And we will look to just conquer Zulu. Ooh, do we not have an interest in that region? We do not, so let's get one. I think we have a decent amount of infamy. Not sure, I think we go for the conquest. I think we go for uh, kneecapping those guys a little bit. And we get an interest here. And we will just go for Conquer Zululand here. Now, every time we declare a war, half of the infamy we gain, if, uh, for example, if we just take a look at the strategic region, half the infamy uh, that we gain from the war, we will get in negative relations with everyone who has an interest here, which includes Great Britain, which is one of the reasons why getting a trade agreement or getting a customs union with Great Britain early on is extremely good uh, because you will have a positive relations modifier, which will make it easier for you to avoid them sticking their finger in your pie, uh, which is critical uh, to not get your pie fingered. All right, so we get this. So after this next tick of colonial resettlement, 
Uh, we will... Ooh, did we have our guy die and get it become a Jingoist? Yeah, this is unfortunate. Uh, it's actually kind of amusing. Uh, the, the guy... This really actually made a huge difference. The guy we recruited to be a Navy... Uh, ended up becoming the leader of the interest group. So we no longer have the market liberal. So that means that means it's going to be extremely hard for us to actually pass uh, uh, free trade, which is a bit unfortunate, but we're trying to get inside someone else's market. So it's not going to make a huge difference. Um, but we did get a jingoist, so it, it is going to make colonial resettlement a lot easier. But we would actually still prefer exploitation, so we're actually going to come off of this and go for exploitation instead. Because now we have a jingoist uh, ruler landowner. So, a little bit interesting. Um, also, notably, it's nice that they're a jingoist, because normally when your market liberal dies, these guys get super pissed. And since it's a jingoist and he supports the law we're going for right now, that is uh, big nice. So... Happy to see that, like, very, very small, uh, kind of min maxi type thing actually pay off in a, in a fairly robust way. We're just gonna navally invade with two. One of them, the invasions, will catch the army, the other will get in for free. We are running a pretty big surplus. Um, I don't think we have enough iron, uh, to really increase, uh, turn, a uh, level... Yeah, so we're still running an iron shortage here. So what we will do is instead we'll find a place that is not using iron tools, like this one, and we're going to increase the construction center level by a couple levels. Uh, and this way we'll try and spend a little bit more money without, uh, you know, leaning into that shortage or exacerbating the shortage. And so one of these sea catches their army, and the other one is going to catch just 1k troops, because uh, there's not enough combat width for all of them to be on the first battle. So the, the other guy gets in basically for free here. And we get an election. The conservatives win, so let's reform the government and see what we can do. We can get the intelligentsia in relatively easily. Uh, we don't really have laws that we super want to pass, although we will want to get total separation relatively early. So why don't we try and do this as our free reform, which is going to feel pretty good. And now uh, our one guy fails, but he, the other guy is in it. And so we will not have the naval landing penalties, so we will get these guys pretty easy. And both Great Britain and France are cordial now, so we'll take another look at if they want to join Customs Union. So we can offer Great Britain uh, an obligation to get us into the Customs Union. This is a little bit of a dangerous thing, because they can protectorate us afterwards. But I don't think us being a Great British protectorate would be all that bad. Uh, it would limit us, um, you know, kind of with our own ability to leave and then form our own customs union. Uh, but this will be good for maybe 30 or so years. Uh, and so, and it'd be very strong in particular for us on Brazil or any so sort of South American or America's country where you have a ton of the excess arable land. So you have a ton of migration attraction. So we're just gonna owe them an obligation here and get into their custom union. Which also hopefully, uh, when they accept, we will get this ticking, uh, improving relation from the customs union. So this is going to be nice. And then we will... Yuck. I don't think we want to eat the bureaucracy. Uh, but we'll see what our... So this guy, the armed forces, getting less popular. We do not really care about that. We'll just eat that minus 15%. And we'll get colonial exploitation soon still here. And now that we're in Great British Customs Union... And we're still going to be improving relations. Now we can go after all these other countries here in South America, which is going to be nice. We could also go for Transvaal and these types of things. We get Lades, which is, of course, nice. Um, the big reason why Lades is so important is it allows you to switch on to... Uh, it gives you PMs to switch on to, which are going to be owned by instead capitalists. So if we take a look at the textile mills here, you'll see their merchant guild owns by shopkeepers. Shopkeepers contribute 5% of their income to the investment pool, or 5% of the dividends, rather, not their income. Uh, and capitalists will contribute 20%, so getting on to capitalists as quickly as possible is really important. And so this is uh, critical why Lades is one of the best techs in the game, uh, because it allows you to switch over the consumer goods. Now, we will also switch over a few other PMs here, uh, because now that we're in the Great British market, we will be in better shape to just kind of turn everything on, because we can use all of their goods uh, to allow for all this. We will, of course, do free churches. We should have done that at the start. It's one I often forget. Yeah, secular academia. Cool, cool, cool. This vineyards will be much better. Looks like citrus orchard is pretty good. So we'll do that with harvesting tools. I think that long term, the other one's better, but okay. And now, um, 
let's talk a little bit about let's go hardwood production on all of these and they are privately owned here fishing trawlers and privately owned perfect and so let's talk a little bit about being inside the great british customs union because it's going to give us a few advantages one is of course the pops this is the main advantage the main thing we were looking for is to siphon off pops if we just take a look here and we go to population and we go to attraction overall we will have a lot more migration attraction than great britain uh despite our sol not being that high because we have so much unused arable land here so we will be able to siphon off a ton of pops and this is the big reason why it's important but what it'll also let us do is it'll let us focus our industries we have a couple edicts down and so uh these edicts give us comparative advantage both encourage resource industries and also encourage manufacturing these give us a comparative advantage in our industries relative to great britain because we have extra throughput and so this means that we will be able to build you know more industrial building more industrial and resource oriented stuff and while we are in the great british market they will be able to eat our goods and uh, also what will happen is our since our goods are more profitable relative to theirs or our buildings are uh, what they will do is this is uh, a very very important thing they will build all the agrarian stuff we will build all the industrial stuff and we will benefit from that greatly because the agrarian stuff is owned by landowners who give 10 percent of their dividends to the investment pool whereas the other ones capitalists own which give 20 percent of the investment pool we're going to come in here and we're going to go atmospheric engine uh and then mechanical tools and then into railways because we really need the railways for uh, uh this province here minsky Aris. Uh, because they are already over on the infrastructure, despite having an incur uh, the roadways edict active. But things are coming on qu along quite nicely. We will be getting colonial exploitation soon. Hopefully, we can get in through Suzu into here, uh, but we will see. We'll check the infamy. We're at 16. We don't want to go over 25. And we do have to be a little bit cognizant. We'll just do that one. Uh, we do have to be a little bit cognizant of the fact that if we, you know, puppet Argentina, for example, which is what we want to do, which is probably what we're going to do, we're going to increase uh, our infamy level by 10, which will put us in a new infamy bracket. So we don't want to do that. We actually just want to chill for a little while. Uh, keep improving relations with Great Britain. We will get booted from their market if our relations get negative. And so if we did uh, any sort of play that was 14 or more infamy, this would drop us below 20 and we would get booted from their market. So also we can uh, absorb all the iron now and just swap to iron frame buildings on everything. Uh, because, of course, there's a lot more iron in the Great British Market, and so this will greatly help us increase construction, which will be big, nice, popular playwright. Let's uh, take the prestige for now. Well, actually, we're probably pretty cemented in being a major power. Let's see how close we are. Yeah, we're not going to decrease to minor power at, like, very easily, and I think we'll just take the uh, this uh, for going up and trying to get colonial exploitation a little bit faster, although it's not too big a deal. do think we have this on auto expansion it does have the throughput bonus which is going to be nice we are also going to put in a clothing textile mill here and also put it on auto expand and these will kind of be our two central industries that we are trying to build tall here in sao paulo uh, at least in the early game we will also probably uh, expand the logging camps because in particular logging camps are extraordinarily, uh, you know, the chop chops are extraordinarily efficient uh, when it comes to uh, contributing to the investment pool. And so this is going to be one of the main things. Also we have, we can build these logging camps up really high. Normally a lot of places, they only go up to like um, level seven, eight, 10 whatever logging available uh and a ton of the provinces in brazil specifically go over 20 which is currently the max throughput bonus for us and so we will be able to get an enormous throughput bonus so it's not just that we have a lot of logging it's that all these loggings will be much better because most uh let's find a different state most states will only be able to build up to 11 so they'll have like a throughput bonus of like 10 percent ours will have a throughput bonus of 20 percent so not only do we have more each one is going to be you know roughly eight or nine percent better than the average one or in terms of output we also do have a little bit of excess bureaucracy let's see if we can incorporate anything by anything i mean this just for uh, kind of more theme than anything else. This is unfortunate. I think we'll take the uh, colony growth speed here uh, for two years uh, and just hope to get it on the next one because we already have a lot of uh, chance here. And we will check our infamy. 
We are 14. We will check here. So we just need to wait just a little bit, and then we're going to take a save and go for Argentina to pup it. See that there is a millet farm being actively produced here. What we will do is we are going to try and push the economies of scale, specifically in the iron mines here. Um, and so we are just going to crank up here as much as possible. And also we are going to crank up the wood, but we can't crank it up here. Uh, because they have they have uh, already have problems with the infrastructure. And so what we'll do is we're going to find a place that can build up a lot of wood that is somewhere else. And we're just looking for some place that can get like an economies of scale bonus of 20-ish. Uh, that is not going to have any construction malice. Uh, and is not Sao Paulo or where we are building up the iron. So here has quite a... I think I saw one with 18. We're going to look at Bahia. Bahia does not have a penalty, so we're going to put this on auto-expand, and we're going to crank up a bunch of these as well in our active queue. And then we're going to take a save, and we're going to go after Argentina here. But let's take a look at our pops. You see our pops are now steadily increasing by a little bit more, and as we bring our SOL up, it will be even more... Uh, pronounced and so we will go for a puppet on them and then we will mobilize everyone and put them all on the front although we will land from the rear with one of these guys maybe we land with two not sure yet now we can increase construction by quite a bit we are losing some money but we have yet to increase taxes and so i think we're going to increase taxes and add more construction particular in the areas that we are building up a little bit, right, which is currently here. And I think Bahia was the other one. Yeah, Bahia is the other one where we are adding quite a bit. And so we'll add a couple construction centers here, and we should be able to support all that. We are making a little bit of money. We kind of want to be losing a little bit of money. And we get colonial exploitation, so we will establish the colony here in Suzu. Uh, fortunately, no one's competing with us. Since we're only getting uh, 415 days, we will not add any other colonies, and we'll just look to get this quickly. Although, longer term, we will want to go for Kenya if we can. So we will declare an interest there. We should have gone for war reps as well in Argentina, but this is fine. Uh, let's check if they have any boats. If they have boats, we will use... Okay, so we can just beat this with just the one. Um, so we will land with this guy. And come in from the rear here. We're losing quite a bit of money. I think we're in okay shape. Getting an auto uh, queue on coal, which is nice. And it looks like, yeah, we're just going to be wrecking them here. We did okay on the generals. Uh, we have Woodland Combat Expert, Woodland Combat Expert, Woodland Combat Expert, which is going to be really good for fighting in here, because it's mainly woodlands. Um, so this will be good. We do get a Zanj interest. Empiricism is going to be actually a pretty big one. Pretty nice one. I'm going to see uh, what we want to pass now. So we will eventually want to go back to land base and forward to proportional, but that's kind of a little ways off. We can come off of Monarchy if we can empower these other guys a little bit. And so we'll probably go for Total Separation here. This will also, notably, you know, we kind of... <laughs> France would have been better, um, now that I think about it, because I just realized we discriminate against the English Pops, because they're all Protestant and we're Catholic, I believe. Uh, but if we go Total Separation, we will not uh, discriminate against them, so we will go Total Separation. And then we will be getting more on the migration. This cranked up a little bit, but not a lot of it. And I was expecting a little bit more. It's because we don't accept the English Pops that are Protestant, I think. So once we get that, we should be in better shape. Yeah, unfortunately we can't re-land again, but we're going to enforce on them relatively quickly here. And then we have quite a bit of infamy, and so we'll have to try and find a low infamy war. Going after Nejd and maybe Dominioning them could be a play. Kind of a little bit keen on... Maybe just chilling and then looking to puppet New Granada. We cannot diplomatically integrate these guys, but we can go after them militarily. But we could also just wait and go after Transvaal and go for a Dominion on them. It's just five infamy, uh, but it will be long-term very, very good. Orangey might be a little bit better. 
Uh, and we do want to make sure that these guys do not get positive relations with us, so we'll actually damage relations with them. Ooh, we see the auto queue building the Arts Academy. That's not ideal. Uh, but this is very ideal, because we are going to get a larger and larger throughput bonus, and this province is big nice, because while it doesn't have a 51, it does have this 20% throughput bonus. And so this will be good. Especially while we go for Atmospheric Engine. So we are currently building up a ton of mines, and then the mines will get really good off the back of Atmospheric Engine. Bureaucratic and Hmm. We're just going to take this event... And we're going to just try and find something else. That's unfortunate. We were really looking to accept the pops. Um, but we can probably try and get on to... So, public schools... So, assimilation is kind of bad. But I don't think we're going to be able to pull the standard of living up incredibly high. Uh, such that private schools will give more uh, education access. And so, I think we're going to go for public schools. But we're just going to take a close look at uh, maybe what we can do. We don't really like National Guard that much. Um... We'd rather be on no home affairs, to be honest. But maybe this isn't too big a deal. Let's... We also would like to have no migration controls. Although that's not uh, at all a priority. So I think we'll come on to trying to pass public schools here. Private schools also would give more clout to the uh, industrialists. Or, sorry, the intelligentsia. But it's not super, super important. Losing a little bit of money here, but this is fine. We're super okay with this. Yeah, it's going to be really nice getting on to mechanical tools right after, because we're going to get a, like relatively quick railways. Although, we probably will do water to boiler after this, and try and focus on the mines and the chop jobs, at least uh, initially here. Because they are going to give the most to the investment pool. Uh, relative to construction on a per construction basis they're going to be the best at contributing especially since Great Britain will be eating our goods um, we can specialize a little bit more on the resource industries we do want to expand these out quite a bit though and this stuff is expensive so let's go with this hmm I don't think we really need their approval right now, so we'll just do this. And let's check our infamy. Alright, so we're down at uh, 18. Let's check how what our relations with Great Britain are. They're relatively good. I think what we will do is we will go for... I mean, we could maybe try and just clean up these borders and go for these guys. But I don't think this is ideal. Uruguay, we might want to pop it, actually. Uruguay will make a good puppet. Uh, one of the reasons to go for a puppet is uh, it gives them five construction, uh, or they st have five free construction, and that would be like 10% of our construction. And so rather than incorporating them, we can puppet them and let them build just a whole bunch here. And it's just a cheap little puppet, um, not too expensive, but I think we're going to go for Dominion first on Orangey. And so we're going to take a little bit of a quick save just to make sure Great Britain doesn't uh, go psychotic. Because sometimes, you know, they're cordial with you, they're genial with you, and then they just decide, ah, we don't like this guy. Notice Great Britain's like the only one who has an interest here. And so when we accrue this five infamy, we will get minus two and a half relations with them. And so this is something to like watch out for. Uh, because if you are in Great Britain's... How'd this happen? Uh, awkward. Uh, when you're in the market, you can't let it dip below. Uh, we're going to improve relations as well. You can't let it dip below uh, 20 relations. Otherwise, uh, it will cut off your customs union. So this is just something to keep in mind. Also can't do this strategy while uh, you know, you're doing a high infamy type of run. Which Brazil isn't quite strong enough to come out the gate swinging like that. Although it is a relatively strong start. After we sew this guy up, I think we'll actually switch on to, you know, better PMs here on all this. Let's actually do this for these guys, and then we will be doing it for them as well. Cur curriculum disagreements. Hmm. We'll just take the enactment time. We might take one more tick, and people gotta know of the depravity. And this is a very big tech uh, point that we get here. 
also gonna make sure where do we have we must have uh, general or we must have units here uh, in HQs that are not being used so South Africa and Indonesia we will delete these because we don't want to pay for them and then the big tech we got of course was on the rural stuff and now we're going to be able to swap all these over atmospheric engine pump and we can just swap them all over very comfortably because the uk notably of course does have uh, a bunch of goods we'll switch these to fig orchards and butchering and this and this and we complete atmospheric engine uh immediately which maybe we should have gone for finishing mechanical tools because you could get progress towards railways but i think we're gonna go water tube boiler relatively early here and so we'll just kind of do that um we will want to go proportional taxation pretty quick here actually it looks like uh because egalitarianism is pretty close uh, and so i think what we'll do is we'll do this into this and then get egalitarianism uh by then banking and mass communication should have mad spread to us and so we can go egalitarianism uh, and so we'll try and get on public schools we'll take another tick uh if we don't get it we'll try again for total separation uh, we're cranking up a little bit here in terms of the migration. Don't have enough attraction to get a mass migration event. Uh, but we are trickling in some of the, you know, non... Or some of the Catholic pops from Great Britain, which are not super numerous. Let's do this. We'll take a save again, and we will, of course, just pop it. Now, we're going to puppet instead of uh, Dominion here, uh, because we are planning on keeping them as a puppet for a long time, I think. Actually, let's just Dominion them. UK might side with us. That's kind of comforting. Of course, this means they'll probably join against us. We probably didn't even need to mobilize these guys. We'll also make sure to put in uh, Ask for War Reparations. And also Open Their Market. We'll make Open Their Market primary. We don't really care about the War Reps. Um, but this way, people are less likely to join against us to Open Their Market uh, as a general heuristic. We're getting a lot of these tooling manufacturers up. Uh, we are probably suffering some pretty significant infrastructure problems in the places we're focusing on now. Uh, yeah, like here. Ugh. We built up a little bit too much there. That's unfortunate. Alright, we get our little war with Uruguay. And we are making a bunch of money. But we gotta add some construction to the queue. I think we'll start expanding here. Uh, the iron mines and put them on auto expand iron is notably very uh, profitable because it is in huge demand from iron frame buildings which we will continue to add um, so the price of iron is going to stay relatively high which is why we're going mainly iron and wood early uh, because both of those PMs are incredibly efficient uh, but also we can build a ton of that uh, where the PMs are very efficient and the demand is high, so just the cross-section of both makes them kind of the best industries to focus on early on, along with tools, uh, which, you know, it eats tools. So we'll be puppeting these guys, or dominioning, rather. And we get mechanical tools, which is nice. We will swap over immediately, because, of course, Great Britain has access to steel, and so this will also decrease the iron. And then we'll also switch to sulfite pumping, which is also unlocked by mechanical tools. And so is slaughterhouses. And we'll switch to the harvesting tools there. Can we reform the government? We can. It looks like we want to maybe do something like this. And these guys are going to really want to patch screw, uh, schools. And we get... Uh, First journal entry for economic dominance for production increased. We have to have a steel level four steel mill as well. I suppose we could just take a quick look into this, but we will eventually get that level four steel mill no matter what. I suppose we can just build one where we are encouraging manufacturing and just have it auto expand and this will be fine. Now we need to use a little bit more of our construction and so what we are going to do is we are going to build out some logging camps and some spots. We're just looking for another spot that won't have a penalty 
So do these guys have a construction penalty? They do have a construction penalty. They notably do have a uh, really nice iron though, so we'll put an iron in there and put it up like that. I guess we might just be swinging up this logging camp to max. Max might be a little bit too much, but we will just crank it out quite a bit. And it will be big nice. GDP is coming up quite nicely. That's kind of frozen, but we are getting, you know, migrants and stuff. Not a whole lot, but not a little either. We're at 25. Once this comes down a bit, we will want to puppet uh, Chile. Chile and Argentina's populations seem to explode the most, so they seem like the best earlier puppets to go for. And uh, overall, what the strategy is going to be is we're going to just try and take all of South America. This isn't necessarily the best, uh, but it, I think, it makes good for a good map painting exercise and is more on theme with Brazil. Uh, to take all of South America as opposed to Gallivant all over. Although we'll still do a lot of that. We've already started to do a lot of it. We'll probably go for Montenegro next, actually. We can just Dominion them or Puppet them. Probably Dominion. But this will give us an adjacency to Austria, which will be useful uh, as throughout the game, basically. I think we'll add a little bit of construction, though. Actually, let's take a look at our colony. Are we adjacent yet? No, not quite yet. We're getting there. We do not want to add a new colony until we get uh, adjacent to Fudajalan. But I guess Fudajalan will be the next war we want to do. And we'll either want to puppet them or annex them. And so I guess we'll just chill on the infamy, actually. So speaking of gallivanting, we're going to gallivant through here. Because we want to get into Eastern Mali, which has the very, very nice, unique building. Oh, well, this is nice. I don't think we'll take the Arts Academy throughput, I think we'll take the Tech Progress. But in here is the Mosque of Genet, which gives 20% education access for free. Or I guess you need the employers. Uh, this is not going to give us too much enactment chance. Although we don't mind hitting the thr uh, throughput of these because it'll make them less profitable. Which will discourage our queue from building those things. So we don't mind that too much. So we'll just take this. We will probably stay on public schools. It's unfortunate we've gotten some unlucky ticks as far as the law passes goes because we do want to go to land-based taxation here. Uh, industrialists do oppose it, so we will have to reform the government to be conservative to try and get this through. But this will be fine. Play for power. Nope. No power for you. And we're starting to get a pretty big throughput bonus, or, yeah, here. Both from economies of scale and the fact that we're encouraging manufacturing. We need more pops pretty badly. We don't allow discriminated pops to move. Uh, but this isn't going to be the main driver of our problem. We really have to get off of this on the total separation. Unfortunately, the landowners are traditionalists now, which is not ideal. We get public schools, so now we can have a bit of a think. Hmm. So, we could go free trade. It's not that valuable because we're inside of a customs union, though. We could try and get off slavery. We're going to be pissing these people off in just a second, though. Hmm. I think we're going to try for total separation again. It does make them mad, but this will help us to attract English pops, and it's going to be pretty important in that way. I guess we'll want to colonize this at some point. Uh, especially because we are now adjacent here. So... We will, uh... Do we not have an interest there? No, we do not. I think we'll forget about this interest here, and we'll declare here, and we'll go for Kenya as well, which is the second best uh, place to go in. And we can even pause here, but... <coughs> I think we puppet... We're gonna take a save, just in case Great Britain goes psychotic. Uh, and we're gonna look to puppet...
will, of course, expand the Great British Customs Union. And then we're also going to open their market and make opening their market primary. And we're going to go for war reps and not make that primary. That way they are likely to just back down. And if they just back down, uh, that will be fine with us. Uh, we are notably doing Puppet instead of Dominion. Because if you don't do Puppet and you do Dominion, you will not have military access. And the whole point is to snake our way into Messina here. I think we will actually will pause the uh, the colonization here, though. Who did Jalan backs down? Uh, we will actually, since we pause this, I think we have to do the save load trick because colonization is weird. We're gonna add a colony there, and then we are going to uh, pause the recording and save and load the game. So we saved and load, but I think we're going to conclude this episode here um, and just talk about what we did a little bit. Uh, we notably, we finished up the Civil Wars at the start. We talked a lot about how we're going to focus on resource industries here at the beginning uh, because they're more efficient. And also we joined the UK's Customs Union for two reasons. One, it allows us to specialize a bit more. You know, we would not be able to profitably build these iron mines up as high, although we do, we are in want of labor. Uh, we would not be able to generally build these up as high uh, and have them still be profitable unless we had the UK to you know be eating the iron and this sort of stuff also building the tools up high while we are building eating their consumer goods we have a comparative advantage you know in these other ones and we are going to be pushing those and this sort of thing and so it's going to be helpful on two fronts notably before we kind of get all of them to be migrating we do have to uh, get um, onto total separation also notable thing, you can't have subjects and join someone's customs union, although they can invite you if you have subjects, which is kind of weird. Um, but we need to get on total separation in order to be able to pull the uh, UK pops, because the UK notably is Protestant. They have a different religion, um, so maybe going with uh, France into their customs union would have been a little bit better, uh, just for the sake of being able to siphon off pops earlier, which of course is going to solve our problems, you know, not being able to employ here, for example, uh, which is a bit of a problem for us we also have some qualification problems uh, but these will you know these will kind of go away as time goes on we don't have peasants or unemployed here there's a ton of migration attraction here there's a ton of migration attraction here everywhere uh, because the unbuilt uh, arable land really uh, gains a lot of migration attraction which is why it's so critical for us to get inside a UK's market or someone's market so we can siphon off pops and so this has kind of been the plan uh, as far as expansion goes we've just we've done kind of the usual suspects but also into Argentina and Chile I think Argentina and Chile are really good puppets to get because when you puppet them they will keep colonizing their population will grow a huge amount and they make for good annexes later on uh, but it guarantees you you know access to all of patagonia if we just puppet them and then let them do their thing for a while uh we of course uh managed to get into south africa using the double landing trick uh to land zululand uh, which i think is necessary if you only have 10 boats and 12 guys uh, we also took brunei which is of course good because it has gold uh, it has a good amount of sulfur and iron as well um big th one is the, the gold and the adjacency to Lanfang, which is part of China's market, which allows you to trade with China better, although that's less of a concern now that we are inside of the UK's market. And then, of course, uh, we started, you know, the long trek or the short trek uh, through Sulu as our first colonization target. And we're going for Messina to get the Mosque of Jine, which is going to give 20% education access. I hope you like this video. Uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, uh, click the bell, etc. All that stuff. And other than that, have a good day.